how did they transplant pig hearts into humans? And is the man who received the pig's heart still alive? When was the first time they transplanted a pig's heart into a human anyways? Well, the world's first pig to human tr heart transplant has happened. And what can scientists learn from it? In this video, you will get answers to all of these questions. Now, the first person to accept a heart transplant from a genetically engineered pig is, surprisingly, doing quite well after their surgery in Baltimore, Maryland. However, many ethical and technical hurdles remain. Hello and welcome back to Demystified Daily. In this video, we will show you how a pig's heart was transplanted into a human. And for the first time, pig organs were transplanted with the potential for survival and recovery. Now, before we start the bumpy ride, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. In 2021, surgeons at New York University Langone Health transplanted kidneys from the same strain of genetically engineered pigs into two legally deceased humans with no visible brain function. The organs did not fall out and they functioned normally while the deceased recipient was ventilated. Most research has also, so far, taken place in non-human primates. So researchers hope that the operation on January 7th will further kickstart clinical xenotransplation and help to push it through many ethical and regulatory issues. And after 70 years of failed attempts, the healthcare industry has achieved the impossible. Over the last 100 years, the medical industry has achieved some incredible milestones. But now we are seeing the goal that can only be compared to the first landing on the moon, as Joaquim Denner put it. And this is the first time a human has received a pig heart through transplantation. The process of transplanting animal organs into humans is called xenotransplantation. And the term was coined about 70 years ago when the first xenotransplantation was attempted. There are hundreds of thousands of people with various heart diseases waiting on ultra long lists just to receive human hearts. And most of them sadly pass away before they even get that chance. Therefore, this medical breakthrough is huge for everyone involved. So who is the man with the pig heart? A 57 year old man named David Bennett was in the same boat with an incurable heart condition. So the only solution was a transplant. Bennett was admitted to the University of Maryland Medical Center. Doctors told him that the chances of receiving a donor heart in time were very slim. Still, scientists at the University of Maryland Medical Center have teamed up with a company called Revivicor to grow genetically engineered hearts. They have made it their mission to overcome the shortage by taking organs from a gene edited pigs as it lists on their website. Now for the human organism to accept the pig heart, 10 genes were modified from the pig to make it more likely to be accepted by the human body. It was inactivated because it provoked an immune response. The remaining six are human genes inserted into the pig's genome, forcing the human organism to accept the heart. When told of this last resort, Bennett accepted it with good humor despite the paltry odds offered. We can't give him a human heart. You don't qualify. But maybe we can use one from an animal. A pig, perhaps, Dr. Griffith recalled. It's never been done before, but we think we can do it. I wasn't sure he was understanding me, Dr. Griffith added. Then he said, well, will I oink? The operation was performed on January 7th, 2022. And before the operation, Bennett was given a drug that stunned his immune system and further increased his chance of acceptance. The heart was transplanted and attached to Bennett's body, much like a normal human heart. And from an exclusive interview with Dr. Bennett, she is currently on a cardiopulmonary bypass machine to help him recover. But the new heart is doing most of the work and seems to be holding up well, according to Bartley Griffith, MD, headed by the New York Times. It seems that the body accepted the pig heart just fine. Given that pigs have a life expectancy of 15 to 20 years, Bennett could live up to 77 years. However, 
because it is a genetically modified heart, it can be stimulated by the human organism to live longer. Dr. Barley Griffiths made history as the first surgeon to transplant a pig heart into the human body. But that process has been underway since 2015, when Revivacor announced he was breeding pigs that share some genetic similarities with human. Just seven years ago, he said, their goal was unsustainable because it had been criticized by the public. And after 70 years of a failed attempts, people had no confidence in xenotransplantation. Interestingly enough, xenotransplantation, also called xenografts, are represented by the Lamassu, a celestial body in ancient Mesopotamian religions with a human head, a bull's body, sometimes a bull's horns and ears, and wings. It was chosen as a xenograph symbol because it depicts a human being with different body parts. Throughout the 20th century, many practitioners have attempted various organ transplants from animals to humans but none have met with great success. Many surgeons still do not understand compatibility issues and why the immune system does not allow these organs to be incorporated into the human body. And one of the most notable attempts to resemble this case, in 1963, Dr. James D. Hardy, then professor of surgery and dean of the University of Mississippi Medical Center, transplanted a chimpanzee heart into a human body. Amazingly, the chimpanzee's heart was only half the size of a human heart, yet he lived for 90 minutes before he died. A storm of ethical, moral, social, religious, financial, governmental, and even legal issues ensued, stunning all other attempts at xenotransplantation in America for several years. Dr. Hardy was a prolific surgeon known for performing the world's first human lung transplant, and despite his positive reputation, the world refused to believe in xenotransplantation. Another significant mention is Dr. Keith Riemsma, who transplanted chimpanzee kidneys into 13 patients in 1964. And to this day, he remains the record holder for most xenotransplant operations, but every single one of his patients died from this operation. The longest lived patient surgery occurred in 1992, when Dr. Thomas E. Stoutz transplanted a baboon's liver into a human. The patient survived for 70 days before dying from complications. Even in his case, he was arguably the best in his field, modernizing kidney transplantation and making it a world standard procedure. He was once again struck by a storm of ethical issues as donating organs from animals to humans was viewed as inhumane by society, as if receiving worthless scraps. It seems that the only individuals likely to appreciate this effort are those on the waiting lists. They may wait for days, weeks, months, and even years for their operation. And even then, they continue to hope that death won't come knocking on their door. Xenotransplantation is the future of the medical field, as most of the organs from slaughtered animals are discarded for our consumption. Why shouldn't they be used to save lives? David Bennett's quality of life and how he lives with his new pig's heart could potentially change the public's view if this operation continues to be successful. Several other companies are developing various genetically modified pigs for solid organ transplantation, but there are no medical facilities like United Therapeutics yet. eGenesis, located in Cambridge, Massachusetts, breeds pigs that are immune to retroviruses present in all pig genomes. Enzino in Auckland, New Zealand, breeds miniature pigs with human-sized kidneys without modifying their growth hormone. Chapman's expects that many other organizations genetically engineer pigs for transplantation, but fail to disclose commercially sensitive information. Ayaris and United Therapeutics acknowledge that pigs are expensive, but did not disclose production costs per head. However, as more companies get involved, Cooper expects costs to drop, so the FDA and other regulators will have to relax some of their clean facility requirements. Infection with porcine organ pathogens does not appear to be a problem at the moment, but Bennett and future recipients should be monitored, just in case. This is a very early experiment, and we will not see clinical applications anytime soon, but if it works, 
and it could take a few more years to fully develop, if this process is successful, donating organs can be made more widely available in the future and will not be a major obstacle. So guys, what do you think about this issue? Will these experiments become long lasting or not? Let us know your comments in the let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. And we will be back with more informational and surprising content. But until then, stay tuned. Make sure to like and subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon so that you can get notified when a new video comes in. Thanks for watching. See ya.